So if, uh, we picked up, and you're talking about that the, the young generation th shows a lot of promise. And they are gaining recognition. I believe we are very proudly say that in uh, medicine, we are the world class. We have developed, I mean, our high tech. This is something in you know, what really, basically, it's uh, our major economic factor. And uh, we are making progress in, in getting the independence in the uh, energy field because we build it, uh, uh, terminals you know, which will actually separated us from the Soviet Union, I mean, providing us the oil and the electricity and all that stuff. So we are totally independent. That provides us the initiative to develop other economic I mean, areas in which uh, our export and our, our quality of life is uh, growing. Uh, we have, a, I would say, in 50 years, with two generations. And those are definitely already the product of the West. And we have a lot of students in United States universities with the stipends. And all over the world, I mean, we being invited into all international conferences and participating as a equal members. So my estimates that we are really successful, successful in reasonably 20, in short 25 years and we are looking with a great progress and, and hopes I mean, into the future. Another field that I would like to stress again, mean, this is from my own experience, uh, we are being accepted into the society at the highest level. The first time in history the sitting president of the United States ever visited Lithuania. It happened. The, who could expect that the emperor of Japan and empress will visit Lithuania? It happened for the first time in a thousand years. The Queen Elizabeth, I met with her four times eye to eye in Buckingham Palace in Scotland in her summer retreat home. Uh, then, I would uh, you know, say, all the European royalties, I mean, were in Lithuania. So that developed, uh, I would say, the overall recognition. And I'm really happy. Of course, definitely, I had a first meeting and an official meeting in Moscow with President Putin. And uh, at that time, our relationship, I mean, was. I would say at a you know, normal level, it was maybe not love between the two countries and people, but very realistically, I mean, I spent uh, two days, full two days in Kremlin, <coughs> and one interesting factor is usually the state uh, chiefs of states, I mean, when they are visiting Moscow, for example, are they are really spending, I mean, their time in the hotels and all over the place. I was the first one who were actually received and uh, they put Alma and myself into the Crown Princess of Tsars in Kremlin. Not in a hotel, but it was, I mean, I, don't, I still don't know, I mean, why it was such a strong exception for us. Maybe they feel, felt that, I mean, by that they can draw us back closer to Russia and so on. Well, you, well, well you, um, you know, over the years at EPA you, that you were there, I mean, you hosted uh, Russian delegations, you speak fluent Russian, uh, uh, you kept good relationships uh, so that you could go in and out of Lithuania during that time and, and yes. you know, <coughs> so... Uh, and I'm sure they had a file a mile long on you over there, so, I mean... And bad and good. And <laughs> yeah, but I mean, obviously, you know, I, I think uh, they had confidence in uh, that you were going to deal, deal directly and honestly with them. But actually I had to disappoint them, because when the later events, when the occupation or 
I would say, war against in Ukraine and in Georgia, in Azerbaijan, and in all those in fact over there. Uh, I stood one, first one who stood up at the United Nations saying in denouncing them. I have organized the organization or the other leaders of the country took them with, with me back and uh, were open, at the open meetings at that time in Ukraine when Yushchenko I mean, actually took over and standing in front of tens of thousands of people, I mean denouncing the Soviet Union I and mean, I know that this was not a very pleasant moment for Putin to, to get this from me. And, uh, but we definitely proved one thing, that we are not two-faced players in a world politics. We said we want to be with the West, we are in the West, and we are going to defend the principles of, of democracy and freedom. And uh, definitely after that, I mean, I have to admit, during my term, when we were meeting with President Putin, I mean, at international European conferences, all that stuff, uh, the perception or, or, or well, our relationship, I mean, looked very sour. I can tell you one, one interesting incident, I mean, the conference was in Finland. I mean, all the leaders of the European, 26 leaders, presence with the presidents over there. And Putin was invited for the first time to be the honor guest at the evening dinner and to make a public speech. So we were standing before his arrival uh, by the groups of country leaders over there since the, it was 30 kilometers outside of Helsinki. The president of uh, Finland went to meet put him at the airport and bring him to the our meeting over there. And we were standing with the drinks in hand and all that talking. I mean, in, in my group, I, mean, I was standing uh, together with President Chirac of France and uh, uh, the late uh, and, uh, and Mr. Kaczynski and uh, I believe it was a, some Swedish leader and others, five or six of us talking. And suddenly I see the Putin and, and the President of Finland is walking into the room where we were there waiting for him. And he was uh, meeting everybody. We were deeper in the room and uh, shaking hands and so on. He comes up to our group. And one thing what Putin, I mean, it's, uh, I have always noticed, he never comes to you and looks into the eye when you meet him. And he came up to our group and extended a hand. I don't know who was first in, in that group over there, and just to hello and so on. And I was the number four probably one. And uh, he came up to me extending the hand, and I in Russian say, Welcome, Mr. President, in Russian. He looked. He lifted up his eyes and looked at me, pulled his hand back, <coughs> turned around and left the others not even saying in the group, I mean, hello, and walked away from us. So I remember uh, Chuck Chirac, I mean, the president of France, he just looked at me and says, he really loves you. <laughs> so that was, I mean, that shows, I mean, our relationship with Putin, I mean, and it never got better. I had another two or three incidents when we met, I mean, but uh, this was such a cold uh, meeting, I mean. Was this, was this was after you, after the United Georgia Nations? After Georgia and, and Ukraine, yeah. I mean, all the incidents when I openly denounced, I mean, the uh, Russia's uh, actions, I mean, in those countries. Yeah. Another thing, I mean, on a very nice and very bright side, I met, uh, I believe, five times with a Pope, oh. John Paul II. I mean, it was really a very warm 
personality. I don't know why did he like me, but whenever I mean, we, even at some of the accidental, accidental meetings, I mean, when he was present and I was participating, he always, I mean, asked for me to come in and we spoke with him. So it's an inter interesting case, I mean, the Polish president Wasniewski. Uh, but one of the meetings that evening we had with him, and he said, you know, we Poles are so proud, I mean, our Polish Pope, I mean, and so on, and I met with him twice, and so on. So I just let that go for a few minutes, and then I said, Alexander, you know, I have a surprise for you. I met with Pope already five times. Believe me, I thought that he's going to fall out out of his chair, I mean, he says, I'm Polish, and he's a Polish Pope, I mean, and I met only twice with him. So, but those are the bright sides of those international meetings. <laughs> it's a great insight. So, uh, you know, uh, it sounds like uh, when you left EPA, uh, you, you went directly into, uh, into the, into the, uh, when you when you retired from EPA, you went almost immediately to uh, right. yes. uh, into I that. I was uh, until the very last minute with EPA. I mean, 27 years as a civil service, and this is one another ex probably interesting point. I mean, that uh, as you know, the EPA administrators were politically appointed. I started as civil service, and they forgot to change my status and the political appointees. And this is why I served six presidents of the United States without a break. They could Republicans and Democrats. <laughs> and I say, this is a record. I believe we should go into the uh, Guinness's book of records. <laughs> no, because you were a civil servant, they couldn't really fire you, right? That's exactly. I mean, that's exactly. Even...